Five Filipinos are amongst the injured passengers of the Singapore Airlines flight that encountered severe turbulence this week. One of them suffered a serious neck injury. And joining us tonight to talk about the science behind incidents of turbulence and how we can better handle and prepare ourselves in case of similar situations we have with us tonight, Marlene Singson, Assistant Director General of the Air Traffic Service in Kaap. Magandang gabi po. Magandang gabi po sa ating manonood at sa inyo po dyan sa studio. Marlene, uh, when the news came out, uh, there was reference to uh, this Singapore flight going through an air pocket. Now we're reading that there's no such thing as an air pocket and that this was turbulence. What exactly happened? Well, actually, when we say air pocket, it's it's a common common statement, a uh, a, a word coined by by people around, but in term in aviation industry, that's what we call turbulence. Okay. Um. Uh, hi, Marlene. First of all, no. Um. Be, after this happened, nagulat lahat ng tao because Singapore Airlines is one of the top airlines. It's definitely um, has a really good record, really good reputation. Does this mean that it could happen to everyone? Um, and dito sa Pilipinas, who is responsible for calling the pilots and telling them na, oh, may turbulence, baka you should reroute or you should avoid this, this route? May ganun po ba tayo dito? It will all depend po kasi uh, there are several causes of a turbulence. Basic, and basic reason would be the wind in the area. But the wind will be a factor only up to a certain level. Pagka po ang aeroplano ay nasa high altitude na, mm -hmm. like 39,000 feet, 37,000 feet, medyo hindi na masyadong factor ang wind. The main factor this time ay ang cloud formation. Mm -hmm. So we have different kinds of clouds. We have the cumulonimbus clouds, which is the most dense. Diba? It's, the, it's, it's actually creates and brings rain. So, pagka po yung mga clouds are, clouds are too dense, the molecules are higher, and their density also contributes to a certain force inside the clouds. So, molecule movements for inside the clouds is up and down. So, that's the reason you experience that particular motion in an aircraft. You go up, you go down, because the aircraft follows the motions of the molecules inside the cloud. The pilots would be able to communicate usually to the air traffic controllers. Mm -hmm. So kami po sa control, the moment we receive an information from the pilot that he is in the soup. It's a technical term, mm -hmm. meaning that the aircraft has entered into a clouds with high-density profiled clouds. So, and they are already experiencing turbulence. The turbulence could vary from, from a different degrees. Mm -hmm. So the more, the higher the density, the more intense the turbulence would be. But Marlene, so what... usually, Paul, when we receive information like that mm -hmm. from the pilot, we, in, we thereby uh, provide uh, vectoring or we give them a, set, a different direction in order to deviate from the regular course. Yun po yung tinatawag namin diversion, weather diversion. Kasi this, these clouds are considered as weather. Okay, but Marlene, so, uh, ang tawag po doon is weather diversion. We, we direct them, them further away from the clouds. But what happened here was actually identified as clear air turbulence, meaning it happens uh, when there are no clouds. So there were no clouds when this severe drop in altitude happened. So ano po nangyari doon? Uh, uh, for, for that particular flight, the Singapore Airlines flight, we are waiting for the final report from, uh, from the body investigating it right now. We don't have the complete report yet, even the recording of the flight itself, the flight recorder, is not yet available at the moment. Mm -hmm. One thing that we are very, very worried about is the global warming. Mm -hmm. These particular changes also 
brings about changes in the airspace. The heat index we're experiencing right now is an indication that we are facing severe weather disturbances. It could be below 120, 12, uh, that's flight level 120, that's 12,000 feet or even higher. Okay, Marlene, um, uh, quick follow-up. Yeah, we are trying yeah. to be ready about. Yes. Right. That's really interesting what you're saying that global warming is also changing how you guys work up there in the flight tower or control tower. Um, what have you been observing up there um, in recent years? Meron po bang nagbabago no, uh, sa mga established trends from before? Uh, what are your observations from the flight tower? Or air oh, I've, been a for, uh, I've been an air traffic controller for 40 years actually. We, during my early years in the service, we haven't experienced, experienced sharp and this lightning that looks like several branches hitting everywhere. Um, but right now, that's the reason we have several red lightning alerts in Manila, mm -hmm. even in other airports like Mactan and Davao. It's a different scenario right now when it comes to weather. So matatalim po talaga ang mga kidlang. And one factor po na ganito ang, ang characteristics ng lightning right now is, of course, the heat being experienced by our planet. And I was wondering also, Marlene, no, kung ito ba ay nakakasira rin sa damaged aircraft. And uh, based on what you said earlier, um, Pilots are being warned naman sometimes ano, on turbulence. Pero sometimes it occurs, uh, may, may, may mga possibility na bigla na lang siya nandadyan. On that note, paano natin, di ba, uh, ma-assess, ma no? Paano ng uh, mga crew uh, will react on this? Actually po, our radar, our surveillance radars, ay equipped with a weather map. Hmm. So, pag inon mo po si weather map, we will be able to identify the locations of the heavy clouds. So we advise the pilots to expect weather deviation. And we are also updated on forecast, on weather forecast. Like for example, ito pong incoming na weather disturbance that we expect in the next 48 hours. So we already have information on that. So we plan for their flights as well in order for them to be safer up in the air. Marlene, um, first of all, may I just say I am so curious po, no, about your work. I've always wanted to go up there into your office and see how, how things go. I understand, of course, that uh, that is very strictly not allowed. Now, um, of course, everyone's just saying, di ba pwede mag seatbelt na lang tayo? Mm. Di ba pwede uh, lagi na lang naka-on yung seatbelt kung nakaupo ka? Because personally, yun yung ginagawa ko. Del. I'm paranoid and I have experienced mild turbulence na tumaas yung yung butt ko, mm, yeah. mga siguro four feet, and it was really, really scary. Tapos bumagsak ako, medyo tumama ako dun sa armrest, ganyan. So isn't it just safer yeah. if we make it a policy to just always fasten our seatbelts? Especially pag mahaba yung flight. Actually po, especially for the long flights, the reason hindi rin yan siya actually a regulation mm -hmm. is because of knowing the limitations of the body as well. Although we strongly recommend that you keep your seat belts on all the time throughout the flight. But then there are situations wherein you need to go to the comfort room, you need to stretch your legs and all these things. We recognize human factors. Mm -hmm. That's the reason uh, we allow every now and then passengers to be moving around. Pero naririnig nyo rin po yung usual na sinasabi ng mga flight crew, including the flight attendants, that they suggest to keep your seat belts on. Mm -hmm. Dahil may mga ganito po, katulad ng Singapore Airlines, it came without warning, mm -hmm. as stated by the pilot. The turbulence came without warning, and this is actually unprecedented. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the level, the intensity of the turbulence coming in without any warning, that's unprecedented. We experience turbulence every now and then mm -hmm. uh, because of the current weather situation in the airspace. But this is the first time that their statement is that they have clear skies and yet they experience the turbulence. Another, another cause of turbulence actually is the downdraft and the updraft. 
This is yung pagpalo po ng hangin sa mountain, especially the, the high mountains. Pagpalo ng hangin, if it's updraft, iikot po kasi yung hangin pa taas. And the possibility of the aircraft being pulled down is always there. Pwede rin pong uh, pa, uh, pababakit mataas and then you go back to your mutual flight level which is uh, encoded in the flight computer. Kasi po, pag tumaang aeroplano, ay binibigyan namin mga controller ng air traffic clearance po niyan till your destination. We even provide the flight level if we or usually for international again that would be flight level 360 transposed to 36,000 feet 37,000 feet so yung mga ganun po pwede kang maka experience yung sabi mo ma'am kanina na parang umangat ka ng a few feet from your seat as po ay talaga if you're not wearing your seat belt you're gonna hit your head head doon po sa bubong ng aeroplano. Miss Marlene, ako, kumakapit kami sa upuan namin para sa signal po ninyo. In the same way that we feel like holding on to our seats with the images that are uh, being shown on screen. Uh, and, and this is a discussion, I think, uh, for the aviation industry. As you mentioned, we're seeing changes uh, with weather patterns. Uh, mas malaki ang hamon dito and... Uh, this will be the start of a new conversation. But thank you so much for explaining all of that to us. Uh, we have from Kaap Marlene Singson, Assistant Director General of the Air Traffic Service.